Today I'm going to show you Quest PDF. In my opinion, the best PDF generator for .NET. I have been around for a long time and I have seen it all. Crystal reports, list and label, Stimulsoft and many other solutions. Most of them are expensive, hard to set up and slow. What if I told you Quest PDF is simple to use, offers a fluent styled API, is cross-platform and open source? And the best of it is, we can use C-sharp code to define and design the reports instead of using a report designer installed on your computer. And guess what? There's still a previewer that allows us to see the report while we work on it and it supports hot reload. But first things first, let's see how to install Quest PDF in your C-sharp application and how to get started creating PDF reports. In this empty C-sharp console application, I'm going to install Quest PDF using the NuGet package manager. At the time of this recording, the package has almost 5 million downloads and the release of the latest version was only a few days ago. Quest PDF is available for .NET 6 and later. Notice that Quest PDF doesn't rely on any operating system specific libraries that you have to install on your computer. You just install the NuGet package Quest PDF and you're good to go to create and generate your reports for all the supported operating systems. Now that the application is set up with Quest PDF, let's generate a PDF document. I copy and paste the getting started example from their documentation and import the missing namespaces. By the way, their documentation is great. It has helped me get started and I always figured out a solution when I was looking to solve an issue with my reports. I create the file name variable and move the hello.pdf string inside that variable because I want to reuse this value. The example uses Quest PDF's Fluent API to define the document. We have general settings such as the page format, margins and page color. We also set a default font size. The header section contains a hello PDF text and additional formatting. The content section contains an image and a text placeholder. The placeholders class is a convenient help for quickly designing documents before importing the real assets into the project. In the footer section, we use the current page number method to display the current page number, a dynamic value depending on the length of the generated document. I like this clean and readable fluent API style a lot. Last but not least, we call the generate PDF method and provide the file name where Quest PDF will store the generated document. For this demo, I want to open the PDF document after its creation. Using the built-in process class, we can easily show the PDF using the default PDF application on your operating system. All we need to do here is to set the use shell execute property to true, otherwise .NET will try to open the PDF in the context of the console application, which obviously would fail. Now let's build and run the application. Unfortunately, the application throws an exception. When we take a closer look, we can read that we are missing a license. To make this example work, we need to add the following line to the application. It sets the license type to community. I will talk about licensing later in this video. Now let's build and run the application again. This time the PDF document is generated and opened in my default PDF Viewer application. Here we see a title, some text and a placeholder image as the content of the generated PDF. And at the bottom we have the page number. If we want to change the document, we have to change the program code and restart the application. But what if I told you there's a more convenient way to achieve the same thing in much less time? The Quest PDF Previewer is a NuGet tool that we can install on our local developer machine. We use the following command. .NET tool install questpdf.previewer-global. After only a few seconds, the tool is globally installed on my developer machine. All we need to do now is instead of calling the generate PDF method, 
and provide a file name, we use the show in previewer method without any parameters. And let's comment the code opening the generated PDF document. We now want to use the previewer, which doesn't write the file. Next, we start the application again. After a few seconds, the Quest PDF Previewer starts and shows the generated PDF document. Let's make a few changes to the code. In my case, navigating the code is a bit tricky because I use a huge font size to make it more readable for the video. Nonetheless, I want to make a change and see the changes reflected in the Previewer. Let's change the text in the footer. To see the changes in the preview, we need to press the hot reload button in Visual Studio. However, when we open the menu beside the hot reload icon, we get the option to enable hot reload on file save. Now, whenever I make a change, I only have to save the file to see the changes to the document in the previewer. For example, here I change the text in the footer again and save the code file. I also change the font size of the header text from 36 to 40 and the font color from blue to red. Isn't it fantastic how quickly we can see the changes in our source code applied to the rendered report in the PDF Previewer? I have yet to see another PDF generator with such a short feedback cycle. Now let's switch to a more complex example using a data source. In this project, I extended the previous example. We now have an articles variable which contains a list of articles. The getArticle method in the article data class provides us with 10 articles. Each of those articles has an ID, a product name, stock information, and a price. Below the placeholder image, I inserted a table. For a table, we first define the column definitions. In this case, I use two relative columns with a ratio of 2 to 1 and two columns with a fixed width. Next, I add a table header section with the field names in bold. I use a static block method here to reuse the styles applied to the table cells. Now to the fun part. We use a for each statement to loop through all the articles in the articles variable. And for each article, we add the data to the table. We need to provide a running index for the row method. And again, I extracted the styles for each cell using a static entry method. Now let's build and run this second example project. As you can see, the preview now shows the table below the placeholder image. Here I demonstrated a quick and simple example on how to put your data source into a generated PDF report using Quest PDF. However, there are more advanced scenarios for handling data sources and to build objects containing the information and to provide them to the PDF report. Read more about it in the official documentation of Quest PDF. Now, let's quickly review the document elements we can use when working with Quest PDF. At first, I thought there must be many limitations due to the small size of the library and the simple structure of the documentation. However, there are many visual elements such as text, images, and placeholders, which we already saw in this video. Additionally, there are borders, lines, and background elements. And there are many different ways to position elements on the screen. Basic elements such as defining the width and height, paddings, and the aspect ratio of images. There are also more advanced options, for example, rotating and scaling elements. The content flow elements allow us to add a page break and conditional display of elements. The layout elements include tables with rows and columns, grid layouts, and lists, beside more advanced layout elements. We can also add hyperlinks, create sections, and much more. The documentation provides a great overview of the capabilities of Quest PDF. I have yet to find a scenario that isn't supported by Quest PDF. You can find a link to the GitHub repository in the video description below. Licensing is an important topic for any open source library. Quest PDF uses dual licensing with a generous community license. The community license is free for individuals 
and companies with less than 1 million US dollar annual gross revenue. A professional license for companies with more than 1 million US dollar gross revenue and at most 10 developers costs 4.99 per year. For companies with more than 10 software developers, an enterprise license for 19.99 is available. The license even allows you to continue using Quest PDF to generate reports when you cancel the subscription. You just won't receive any future product updates. For me, this dual licensing model is very generous and fairly priced. It allows individual developers and small companies to use the community edition for free and there's an affordable, professional and enterprise license for bigger companies. The prices are fair and compared to other solutions on the market, they're reasonable. I'm confident that with this dual licensing model, Quest PDF will be sustainable and have a great future in the market. Please refer to the official licensing page on their website to find the right license for your project. With Quest PDF, we have a fully open source and cross-platform PDF creator for the .NET platform. With its fluent styled API, it supports a convenient way to define our reports and to provide the data to render them. Its PDF Previewer allows for a short feedback cycle using .NET Hot Reload. The dual licensing model allows individual developers and small companies to use Quest PDF for free and offers fair pricing for bigger companies. Let me know in the comments down below whether you will try Quest PDF for your next application and what complex report or PDF document you want me to build next on this channel. And if you want to learn more about .NET development, consider subscribing to the channel and I will see you in the next video.